Hello again, everyone. Today's video in the Uranium 2020 series is going to be discussing how money or market forces can potentially interfere with the supply and demand dynamics in the form of unexpected buying or such, and how it wouldn't be unheard of based on the past. So what happened last time that caused the price of uranium to go crazy? On one hand, yes, there was uh, bubble fuel, I guess you could call it, with problems with mines, flooding, cyclones. But what else? What happened last time? Well, funds started front-running the utilities in their quest to buy uranium. So while I think everyone can agree that we probably can't predict problems, cyclones, floods, etc., what may be slightly predictable might be greed. So what are the chances that this time someone, some fund, some money sees the price move and tries to front run it. And uh, if that happens, what does that mean? One thing it could mean is that there's some added demand. Now, financial players, I guess you could say, disagree on a whole lot of things. That's how the market works. But here's some things that I would bet many financial players could agree on. One, 50% return over a few years is a pretty good return. Two, if more people want to buy something, that increases the demand. Three, 45 is 50% higher than 30. Four, $150 million could buy about 5 million well, not about, exactly five million of something that costs $30. You see where I'm going? Well, if you if you don't see where I'm going, I'll, I'll add a few uh, pointed comments that might help. Five million pounds of uranium is about 2.5% of demand, maybe slightly higher, maybe slightly lower, depending on how you calculate demand. The market, is probably only moving because it has low availability of supply because all of the spare supply has been worked out of the system so the demand is imminent and that would be what was moving the uranium price so i'm sure there's plenty of five million somethings that can be found I'm not saying this definitely will happen, but I'm saying it's entirely possible that some funds may try to front run either the utilities or the carry traders or Cameco, who all will be needing more uranium. Now, this could this would mean that there's potentially some unforeseen demand that could be a bad time for utilities. And also, let's remember. If yellow cake ever starts trading above their net asset value again, they can buy up to $100 million of uranium per year. Now, at $30, that's more than 3 million pounds. At $50, it's 2 million pounds. So if some people get bullish on uranium again, that's another potential source of a little bit, but some demand. Now, for the title of this slide, no, I did not headbutt my keyboard. There are a number of prospective funds looking at buying some physical uranium. And one of them is potential, well, a potential one is named Wolverdance. Also, remember Uranium Trading Corp? Whatever happened to that, I don't know. But um, the point is, is that there are a number of entities out there that are potentially watching uranium and 
may be ready or almost ready to pull the trigger, which again could mean some surprising demand. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you've made it to this point, I applaud you. Um, if you enjoyed, you might also enjoy the other episodes in this series, and they will be all out eventually, and probably some have been released already. As always, nothing I say is investment advice. This is all just what I'm seeing, how I'm thinking about the sector, and what I view as relevant. So with that, I will leave you there, and have a great day.